So we start with the first part. Uh, we have 20 minutes or 25 minutes. I want to ask you, um, what did you see in the movie? Very general question. Indeed. Uh, she saw a great man of a great faith and determination. Indeed. So the first question that they taught us, and it was the, always the most challenging uh, question and, and the most annoying one, and then our teacher in, uh, in, uh, in, in theater, uh, he would insist on that one in movie discussion. So uh, a title. If it were for you to give a new title for this movie, what would be? What would be the title for the movie? So I will start with that annoying question. So if it were for you to have a title for the movie, so it is, we know it is, the, the title of the movie is The Journey of Ibn Battuta or A Journey to Mecca, right? Uh, or The Road to Mecca, Journey to Mecca. If it were for you to, to give the title, what would be the title that you will give? That you would give? Bismillah. Journey to humility. Beautiful. I, uh, I don't know when I was watching the movie, it reminded me of the book, uh, one of, uh, you know, uh, The Alchemy. The Alchemy of Happiness. Yeah. Uh, the, al the Alchemist. The Alchemist. The Alchemist, okay, of our brother in Argentina. Okay. Uh, Brazil. That movie. Paulo Coelho. Yeah. Indeed, there is, there is a lot of alchemists in it. So why? Can you, can you introduce the alchemist for people who do not know the alchemist? Yeah. Um, Quickly, just. And the alchemy of uh, the alchemist, uh, uh, the book uh, Paul by uh, Paul Kolo was, uh, and that for human existence, uh, there's a lot of things that human can live for. There's like, you can count it and there's so many that you can live for, but there is one, and only one, or maybe two things that are uh, worth dying for, you know? And it becomes your destiny in life. And what sometimes you get miss, uh, life distracts you from that, uh, life takes you away from that path, but deep down there is uh, an atom that reminds you that there is a journey, that's the place that is calling your name for, and uh, so many challenges in life can take you away from that one goal in life that worth dying for. And, uh, and uh, sometimes you need to find that. It could take you so many years. It could even sometimes enemy or God will send you so many signs or so many mysteries just to lead you back to your, the goal of your existence. Beautiful. Beautiful. Who has another suggestion? A title for the movie. Basically, your suggestion is not just an artistic. It's a, it should be like uh, the... How would you describe this movie? Yes, Anthony. Huh? My love for Mecca. My love for Mecca, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Maybe a struggle at your own risk. Ah. Uh, you can see the persistence and the brilliant. Uh, travel at your own risk. Beautiful. So uh, still you see the determination. So like, like your neighbor, you are focusing and you are you are shedding light on the the determination and the courage of the hero okay mm -hmm. i won't give up same so in so all of you you are you are seeing that angle in the that that uh, that aspect uh, in the hero actually the second question will be describe who is the hero and describe the hero always there is the three questions these are, these are the three classic keys for, uh, so anyone else has, has a, another, another suggestion for the movie, for the title? Yes. The journey is a, is a destination. 
the journey is a destination? Okay. In the journey, ah, ha, 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 ha. the journey is as important as the destination, or the journey is a destination in itself. Good, Bismillah. Yes. The caravan is to Mecca. Good. Yes. The path to unknown knowledge. Aha. Uh -huh. Why? Bismillah. Because um, because of in the movie. His dream was interpreted that he will listen to a, uh -huh. he will have a lot of knowledge gained and he uh -huh. will, whatever knowledge he should be listening to. Uh -huh. So, because he was on a path to, uh, for Hajj, uh -huh. dur during that path he will learn knowledge uh -huh. and he will not know where that knowledge uh -huh. will come from. Uh -huh. Which is why I will say uh -huh. it's a, an, a path to unknown knowledge. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, the two other questions is who is the hero? Describe the hero, and the other question is, can you tell me the story? What is it? Can can someone summarize the movie? So, what did you see in this movie? What is it? So, I, I need one, to at least one to answer, one of them. Huh? One for each question. So, the first question is now, who is the hero? Could you describe the hero? And the second question, which is, could you summarize the movie? Could you give us a summary of the movie? What did you see in it? The story. The story. Who can, who can tell us the story? So if you, if you are about to tell us the story, give us a summary of the story, what would be the story? Bismillah. Which one? The first one. The hero, okay. Yeah. Let's describe the hero. Yes. So I've seen a young man young man who the story started from a dream mm. so he believed in the dream mm -hmm. that he has seen mm -hmm. um, and no matter what can happen no matter the obstacles that he can mm. come across that can come across mm -hmm. he continued and he was determined mm -hmm. out of his uh, comfort zone uh, out from his comfort zone mm -hmm and out of his faith and his... Uh, so yeah. he left his comfort zone and out of faith uh, and determination, no matter what obstacles faced him, yeah, he continued. Mm -hmm. So that's the description that you gave for the, for the hero. Now, uh, anyone else could give me a description for the hero? If you, have, if you have something to add, other than this determination, and uh, we start with this sister and then this sister. She asked, yes? is uh, Ibn Battuta. Ibn Battuta yeah. is a 21 years old, yeah. Moroccan years old yeah. boy. Yeah. Uh, he uh, dreamt one night about um, a land like about Mecca and he's gonna gain a lot of knowledge and uh, he believed in his dream. Um, he decided that he's gonna go on a path, a known path, uh. full of risks and uh. full of uh, hazard and danger. And um, like everybody in his environment, um, they tried to um, convince him to stay in his land and stay in his um, country to, you know, like just uh, um, develop his country and stuff. But like he, he believed that he has something more and deep to seek. And uh, he was true, actually. He was right because uh, uh, he spent his whole life traveling. He is the... Um, the biggest and dearest traveler in the world for now. Uh, he traveled more than any other traveler in the mm. world. And uh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's the story. And, and combined, you combined the two questions, yes? Yes. Yeah. Mm, it's a story of a man who was thirsty for knowledge, mm. who wanted to learn. Mm. I think uh, as kids, we always know, like, okay, we have to go to Mecca, we have to go to Kaaba. They tell us, but they don't tell us actually why. Mm. It's not just all about the sin. It's about a learning journey. It's about mm. knowing people. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a lot bigger than we, what we just imagine as, uh, mm. as a normal. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. Um, the other, I think the other common point uh, 
with Ibn Battuta and all other wise men in the world is traveling because like all prophets traveled mm. in their lives and this is how they seek Al Masih literally means the traveler. Yeah, exactly. Sayyidina Isa bin Maryam, Jesus in literally in Arabic his title is Al Masih because Saha al Arab. Yeah. Uh, the traveler. Mm. Yeah. And like in when you travel this is why this is how you meet yourself. Mm. And this is how you meet when you get out knowledge. of your comfort zone. Yeah. Talking about this, let me just make it very short because even uh, First of all, uh, f raise your hands those who, who did not plan to stay for the second part of the discussion. So I know, I know to, uh, to, to calibrate my, my pace. So those who are not planning to stay for the second part of the discussion, which is going to start from 9 to 10, from 9 and finishing at 10, raise your hands so I know if I should. Uh, okay, so at least basically half of the, uh, almost half of the crowd, they. I have 10 minutes, so we have to... Okay, talking about this. Talking about this, you said leaving the comfort zone to learn more about? About yourself. Leaving your comfort zone to meet with yourself. It reminds me of the title that Rowena wanted to give us, The Journey to Humility. Why? 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 why would that title be very, very actually uh, good for this movie? Journey to Humility, leaving your comfort zone to learn more about yourself. Yes. We speak a lot about the determination of uh, the man, but maybe he was too much conscious of him. Himself determination. Uh, too much confidence. Confidence ah, about so his determination. Ah, too much confidence. Even. In the movie itself, he described that with what? When he raised his hand. Ah. When he raised his hand and he asked Allah, ah. he said, uh, Ya Allah, please uh, forgive my foolishness and ah. my pride. Aywa. Uh, and arrogance. Three things. Arrogance. Foolishness, pride, and arrogance. Ah. Himself, he called that foolishness, pride, and arrogance. Ah. Journey to humility, leaving out your comfort zone to meet with yourself. More. What do you see in the movie now with the with this light, under this light? Go ahead, Sidi Kamal. Yeah. yeah. Bismillah. Um, the first thing that uh, struck out to me was that in order to gain knowledge and, and, and good knowledge and true knowledge, that you have to go and, and make a journey towards it, that it doesn't work the other way around. Um, you can't, you know, sit around and wait for knowledge to come to you. Allah says, we give knowledge to those who seek it. And that's the first thing that struck, out, that struck me. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, Ibn, Ibn Battuta turned out to be, you know, a great figure in history. Um, you know, traveling great distances. And, you know, those distances are matched by what he's learned. Great. Do we see that knowledge in this movie, though? Do we see his traveling around the world? We just we hear about it. Uh, I agree, it is, it is knowledge, but what kind of knowledge did he learn in this movie? In this movie, just in these 45 minutes that you've watched, what is the knowledge? What did he know? What did he come to know in this movie? Yes, my sister there in the back. Give her the, the mic. Maybe the importance of... Yes, yes, wait, wait, wait. The importance of... Wait and gain weight. Spiritual one. <laughs> Got it? Okay. Maybe the importance of needing other people. So I, ah. I think the, when you were talking about the hero, yeah. to me the hero was the thief because the thief taught him that he shouldn't, yeah, the, the reliance of himself and the bravado in the beginning that he can do everything by himself. But I'm not in regretting end, calling you my sister. Continue. <laughs> Continue. And I, I think later on he learned the value of learning from other people ah, and being with them and mm. what he can learn from them. And it's... For, from the movie, he, he said it in one sentence. Uh, he said it in one sentence himself when he realized that. When, when we started seeing the caravan in Damascus, what did he say? He said, I have learned a lot about people uh, 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 traveling in company, uh, benefiting from the company and the advice. Uh, 
and the, of others. But what, 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 uh, what stopped him? But he said, but my pride stopped me. And in the beginning, in the beginning, again, he spoke about the same thing. He said, I could have chosen to go in the company of a group, but I have all the tools. I have a compass, the stars by night, I have a compass, and I, I, he has everything. Uh -huh. What do you call that? Arrogance. So what kind of knowledge did he learn about himself? So he learned this about what, what kind of knowledge is that? So the movie is about what? Is the movie just about, uh, uh, how to say, reportage or uh, a documentary about how to go to Hajj? What is it about? What is this? It is a sp the spiritual journey. The spiritual journey leading you from yourself to your? To yourself. When you get out of your fake self. To find your true? To find your true self. And then in this 45 minutes movie, we find both of them combined together. And that's because we have to learn. We have to understand that the Hajj is a symbolic journey. The Hajj, the pilgrimage, is a symbolic journey. We are traveling to, to the depth of our own self. To find our own selves. To find the Abraham within us. To find the Abraham within us. To meet again, to merge with the Abrahamic, to have the Abrahamic reunion. The true Abrahamic reunion. Who amongst you is part of the Abrahamic reunion? I'm part of the Abrahamic reunion. No, officially. There is, <laughs> I don't know you. So there is, there is this group. There is this group of, of people, a beautiful group of people, Jewish people, Christian, Muslims, and they, and we, we came together and called it the Abrahamic reunion. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful reunion. Actually, they do, they do beautiful things, uh, mostly in Jerusalem. But uh, for those who are interested, we can, uh, we can, we can give you more, more information about it. But the Abrahamic reunion in the other meaning, uh, the, re the reunion with Abraham, huh? Because that's the whole thing. The Hajj is an Abrahamic reunion. is to reunite with, to reunite with Abraham, with his land, but also with his maqam, with his station, with his spiritual state, with the spiritual state of Abraham, to, re, to refine within yourself huh? the Abrahamic uh, 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 unity, the Abrahamic oneness. Hmm? The Abrahamic concept of God, the Abrahamic perspective of God, and the Abrahamic taste, the experiential, huh? the experiential knowledge, because Abraham, the knowledge of prophets was an experiential knowledge of God. They lived with God. They dreamt of God, they dreamt with God, their dreams, their, their awakening state, their dreams, everything was, was together. Everything was converging, aspirations, everything was about God. That They have that experiential uh, level of living with God. They lived with God truly. So merging with Abraham. Um, so this movie is about that. So now knowing that it is a spiritual journey, can any, uh, is anyone able to retell me this story? Not about this Ibn Battuta leaving a legacy as a, as a traveler and... No. Can someone change the names and give, give different titles? So what is it? What do you see? Knowing now it is a spiritual journey. The roles of each and every one. Can anyone retail, retell the story? Retell the tale? Yes, Anissa. That extra 10 centimeters. <laughs> yeah. And... Also, like now talking about it reminds me of Imam Shafi'i. I think at the beginning when he was like the epic of all scholars at his time, he had, Sheikh Hamdi can correct me, I uh -huh. read Islam. Yeah. He had yeah. a sense of pride, like, yeah. you know, he had yeah. a strong to, sense yeah. of pride. You're talking about Imam al-Ghazali. Imam al-Ghazali, yeah. 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 Hamid ibn Imam al-Ghazali. Yeah. Yeah. He had a, he صح. had a, صح. صح. And then, uh -huh. I don't know if it's before he wrote the books. Uh, before, yeah. that was before, yes. So he wrote the books Ahiyah, Ahiyah, after, after, after the cream of all the, his experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So he went 10 years, uh, mm -hmm. 10 years, like he left his family, his loved one, his 
everybody that knew him and he lived in places where he works. He was Searching cleaning. for what? Just to clean. Yeah, Searching for what? And in one word. In a one word, like before for you himself. Get, before would you before you get the wisdom of God, mm. every cup of human being is full of a lot of impurities, mm. and you need to go through th like through a journey to clean yourself and make your cup empty to receive wisdom of God or knowledge or a higher being. Like your mm. cup, everybody is born with a lot of things that are not godly, mm. arrogance, mm. right? Competing with God within us. Exactly. Mm. Lots and of competition. Yeah, like this guy. Uh, False claims. Yeah. Everyone, everything is claiming. Yeah, yes. like even in nature, God, uh, like gold doesn't become a gold unless you go through a fire. Mm. And you have to go through this fire of life to receive higher being of yourself. Absolutely. To become, to become, to become yourself, basically. To fulfill yourself and to realize, to get to what we call spiritual realization and to become the, the one God wanted you to be or wanted you to become. So that's the story. It's a spiritual journey. Uh, my sister called him the thief and she said the hero is the thief. Just to give a, an appetizer, maybe some people will change their mind and, and stay for the second part of the discussion because we'll, we'll re-watch uh, and relive the, the movie or documentary again. Uh, with these lenses, that it is actually the spiritual journey. Uh, it's not a journey to Mecca, it is a journey to, to the secret of God within yourself. It is a journey to, uh, to yourself. So she called him the thief. Who was that? Who was that man? Was he a thief? Fatima, was he a thief? Can we call him a thief? The man in black. She said, the ego. Could that be the ego? See, the ego gives you advice, wisdom? Who's the ego? The, you know, the, maybe not that, but maybe, you know how we have uh, a good part and a bad part. So was he the good or the bad? He was bad. Okay. He portrayed as bad in order to teach him lessons. Okay, he portrayed as bad. But his role in his life, or what was his role? So what was the role of that thief? What was he doing? It was an obstacle in life. Sometimes obstacles become an opportunity ah. to learn, to become stronger, to so, achieve okay. what you was he doing it? Done. Was he doing it consciously or unconsciously? There I are two ways of yeah. seeing that man in black. It could be the time and the obstacles, man, perso uh, personalize it, personify it. Personified, it could be the time and obstacles and difficulties of life personified. What we call in Arabic, we call that ad dahr ad dahr ad dahr in Arabic means the al zaman or ad dahr or the time. The time has taught me, life has taught me, ad dahr has taught me, zaman taught me to become to become wise man. Uh, the Zaman taught me how to become a wise man. Why the Zaman? Because I, through watching the Zaman, the Zaman is a teacher. They say, uh, time, time passing, al Asr or al the, the time, the Zaman is the teacher for the one who does not have a, a teacher. It is a teacher. Life, life, life is the teacher for the one who does not have a. Uh, so, sometimes the, the lessons of life could be very. Uh, very tough though. They could kill you though. There is no warranty that you will learn <laughs> before you die. Because they say, okay, let me try it all and then I learned. Very few they come out of that experience. Yeah? Uh, uh, really? Uh? Huh? Absolutely. Mm. So, so a, way, a way of looking at the movie, and that's a very symbolic way and very beautiful, profound way of looking at the movie, that the man in black was nothing but the time. The time that comes with obst obstacles hiding wisdom. Usr hiding Yusr. Like we read in Surah Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak in the Quran, uh, Surah 94. Within every difficulty, there is an ease and opportunity huh? for growth hidden. Search for it. Okay. What else it could be that man in black? 
other than the time and the, it could be less symbolic than that. It could, let, let us keep him a man. What could be that man? But I want, I want, I want, I want to keep him a man as a man. He's a man, but not a thief. What, what would he be? He can be the, the sheikh, the ah, spiritual guide. The sheikh, the spiritual guide. The spiritual guide. So how, how many of you could see in, in that man the spiritual guide? None. Ajib. Uh-huh. Now, how many of you can see that now when you look back into it? Do you see the parallel? Huh? Huh? What do you understand? Aywa. So if it is unconscious, it will be the time, but he was conscious. He gave back the money. Did he get anything? Did he take anything away from him? Mm-hmm. So now, that will be the second part of the discussion. Maybe some of you will, will change your mind. So the second part of the discussion will start at uh, 9 sharp, inshallah. Well, thank you for staying. Barakallahu feekum and thank you for coming back on time. So I want to, uh, I want to uh, ask you about your findings. Bismillah. Your findings when you're discussing. I saw you are... You had such beautiful discussions. I hope that you're discussing about the movie. Uh, Don't disappoint me. Even if you are not, just pretend, please. Please. Yeah. So, I want to hear about your findings. Now we are rewatching the movie uh, uh, symbolically. Hmm? We are uh, rewinding Hmm? Hmm. with our memory. And uh, I know that the majority of us, we don't know how to watch a movie because we, did not, we don't even know how to listen and we don't know how to, how to, how to see, right? We need, all of us, we need to be retrained. Really, we need to retrain إِنَّ سَمْعَ الْبَصَرَ الْفُؤَادِ These three elements within us. We need to retrain our ourselves to actually uh, to actually watch when we to actually see when we look at something hmm? and we train ourselves to actually listen when we hear something and we need to train ourselves to actually connect uh, and live when we feel something not just uh, an impulsive kind of feeling or reaction. These are very, very These are very, very important things and rarely I found people who actually have the art of actually watching movies. Uh, for 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 years I've been doing this and and I, I, I love this exercise. People they underestimate. And watching a movie and finding yourself that after a discussion with some people who actually uh, watched that movie, <laughs> at the end you say, oh, I haven't watched it. Uh-huh. Which, is, which is good, which is good, but take it, as, a, as, a, take it as, a, as an insight. You don't want to live your life, and but at the end when you see people who actually lived their lives, say, oh, I haven't actually lived it. <laughs> you see and that's all what God will, will give us you know the day what we call the day of judgment and the day of, of, of revelation it will be commenting our life Iqra kitabak, just read your book these moments that you underestimated these gifts that you the, that you underestimated these days that you underestimated these things that you did not see the value of these friendships, these connections that you did not really see, these opportunities that you let go. Uh, really, watching a movie and living the life, it's actually the same experience. Uh, on passe à côté, uh, on passe à côté de plusieurs choses dans notre vie. How to say on passe à côté in English? Uh, we, miss, we miss out. Uh, we miss out lots of things. 
lots of things be so we need we do need to learn how to how to live and we need to learn how to listen when we hear we need to learn how to see how to watch when we actually see and we need to learn how to connect when we when a feeling comes to our heart uh, we need to need to learn how to open up how to open up truly so so we live uh, we live the moment uh, le moment présent so and that's all what spirituality is about is that uh, so this even batuta this man he was going to a journey was he was he really ready for it was he really expecting all what that journey gave him was he expecting all the gifts that that journey gave him at the end when he left his home was he expecting was he really ready to receive all of that learning was he really going searching for that kind of knowledge no he just left his home it happened that he left his home but God wanted it to be something that he did not that Ibn Battuta did not intend to be and it became a true spiritual journey about learning about oneself uh, what did he learn about himself go back now I want someone to give me the story to 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 tell the tale the whole I want someone to give me the tale so what is it hmm? So we start with the hero and we describe the hero and what happened, what happened, what happened at this point and at that point and that point and that point. So what is it? Can someone summarize the story? So what happened? Bismillah. What happened? No, don't get the... It's, it's, it's okay. There is no wrong answer. There is no trick, but what happened? Hmm? So I will start. It's very easy. So this young man wanting to go to pilgrimage. Yes. He had this desire and determination to go to pilgrimage. He was convinced. He saw a dream. He took that as an invitation. And he left his home, the north of Morocco. Hmm? and he was determined to go to go to Hajj to go to the pilgrimage based on a based on a dream the dream speaks to what? when we see a dream the dream is a mystery isn't it? Hmm? Uh, the dream is a mystery so the dream is a a mysterious experience, isn't it? Mm. Like any mysterious experience, it speaks to what? What is different? It speaks to what? Like any mysterious experience, like any mystery, like any thing you live, it speaks to what? It speaks to what in us, within us? It speaks to the mind, it speaks to the heart, it speaks to the ego. I'm making it simple now. Huh? Only? Okay. Maybe it, it, maybe it is intended to speak only to the soul, but who receives the message of any, any, any mystery that one li lives? Okay, a mystery. Someone, you come now, you walk out of this message, and a man with a white beard appears out of nowhere, or a woman with white clothes appears out of nowhere and tells you, listen. You are, you are not anyone. You have a goal that you need to be searching for in your life. Okay. Can you tell me your spirit? Okay. What else? Only your spirit? We'll, we'll, get, we'll get something from out of that? It's a, an invitation to the heart to discover the reality of the spirit it is an invitation to the heart to discover the reality of the spirit okay it could be but who listens to that message who is you the whole things 
The whole thing. Are you a hole? So all the holes. When you dump some water somewhere where there are many holes, all the holes will get their share. Right? Do you understand? So could the ego take its share from a mysterious and spiritual experience? Huh? If your ego is alive, anything living will take its food. It, from anything. You open a verse in the Quran, you, you teach a hadith, the Bible. The, let us say the angel comes and speaks to you. If you are not pure, if you have an ego waiting for, for what? Huh? Acknowledgement. Ego looking for? Hmm? Recognition, acknowledgement, validation. <laughs> so the ego will take its share. Even if the dream is, whoa, beautiful dream. Even if it was sent from above. But are you there? Mafum. The heart will take its share. The mind will take its share. The soul will take its All of you. <laughs> Actually, all of yous. Because you are not you, you are yous. All of yous, all of the... Hmm? Huh? Huh? Fatiha. Yous, like a yous. Why? It's uh, something that they say in uh, the Valley of Eastern Ontario. Yous guys. <laughs> Actually, it's good. No? I will argue with you. They're smart. Okay, yous guys. You know, but actually use guy. This is what I'm saying here. It's not about guys. Use Fatiha. You are not one you. You have many Fatihas. There you are. Within you, you have the opening and the closing. There you are. Everything is there. You have the success and the defeat. You have everything there. There you are. So all these <laughs> holes, <laughs> when you are not whole, you are full of holes. Okay? We'll be receiving that water coming from God, right? Let us say, let us say me with my, uh, uh, let us say someone who is still, you know, working on himself receives a revelation. Or a voice speaks to him from within the fire. You are walking in the desert, okay? And you go to find some spark for your family. And the voice talks to you, speaks to you, and tells you, hmm? I'm your Lord. Right? So Musa took it. What was in Musa that day? Was he ready? Or he was ready after what? What happened before that moment? What did Musa had to go through before that moment? Huh? Exile. Okay, we can call it exile, but what else? Purification. Huh? Purification a journey, a spiritual journey, and he had a spiritual master and everything. After eight or ten years, فَلَمَّا قَضَى مُوسَى الْأَجَلَ With the condition you read it. When he spent the time that he needed to spend, with the spiritual master, etc., etc., etc. Now he's ready. He was ready to listen to the, to the voice of God and answer it the way... Huh? Was it the first time he listened to the voice of God? No, he listened to the voice of God 10 years ago, before. What happened? He killed someone. <coughs> so what happened? Huh? So do you understand? A dream is a spiritual mysterious experience, but if it comes to someone who is not ready, maybe the ego will take the biggest share out of it. And that's what happened. So when we say after that, motivation happens, motivation. So that motivation could come from the spirit, the godly motivation. It could be the, it could be makshusha, it could be Mixed, it could be polluted, it could be huh? diluted, polluted. 
the ego looking for acknowledgement the ego looking for adventure the ego looking for recognition the ego looking for glory the ego looking for being special being unique right having a story to tell afterwards to everyone right so that's how the spiritual journey starts there is no doubt that God is the one who is inviting us but what responded in me that's the question what responded to the call in me that's the question that we need to answer we are not questioning the fact that the call came from God yes even Batuta young man was invited so that's the first line of the story Ibn Battuta, a young man, a young soul, was invited by the Divine to his holy presence. That's the Kaaba, isn't it? Isn't it? That's the symbol of the Kaaba. It is the house of God. So, one, how to say, once upon a... Huh? Once upon a time, a young soul, a young man, was invited by the Divine into the holy presence of God via a dream. That's it. That's what happened. That's the f first scene. Who answers the call? Who answered the call? How many stakeholders? Stakeholders? How many stakeholders? You know what stakeholder? How many stakeholders answered the call? Can I say only his ego answered the call? What would have happened if only his ego answered the call? He would have turned back. At the first opportunity. But how many stakeholders answered the call? This is very important to understand. Because it's not black or white. You have many stakeholders within you. And maybe all of them, they said, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. So that's the Hajj. You are invited and say, you say Labbaik. Who said Labbaik? Within this one man, how many? All of them. His ego said Labbaik. Can you see now, when his ego speaks the face of the man? Have you seen just, can you give me some scenes when you, see, when you saw like the ego was... A, dominating and was uh, overtaking huh? was leading and oppressing and suppressing the other stakeholders just can you describe can you give give me a few scenes yes uh, that extra one millimeter <laughs> the way the camera film him uh, when the ego is here the camera is just uh, on two uh -huh. And he looked bigger. Yeah. And, uh, Indeed, the filmmaker, the filmmaker is very, very good filmmaker. This one, and this, this, this film, it was celebrated, but according to my, uh, and it's under, underestimated. It's, it's very, 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 very good film. Film, it's, it's brilliant as a movie. It's a brilliant. It's very concise, very short, not long. There is no uh, fluff in it. Tack, 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 tack. Everything is. Could, could understood like this, like this, like this, even if you are the dumbest person, the dumbest or dummy? Even if you are, okay, the most superficial person, you will be, it's a beautiful image, you'll be mesmerized by the image and you'll learn something. Everything is there. It's basically, really, like, like reading Ghazali. Like reading Ghazali, exactly. But even if you are, so depending who you are, if you are the legal uh, obsessed with legal things or you will find it if you are uh, obsessed with emotionality you will find emotionality in it if you are obsessed with scenes and horror you will get it if you are obsessed with with mental and philosophy you will get it if you are spirit if you want to dive you dive like the sea like the sea children could play on on the shore uh, and build castles and and then uh, and then waves will uh, wave them uh, wash them off uh, like that and, and, and people, they could go and find fish. Some other people, they could dive to find. 
huh? pearls. Other people will just, you know, drown there. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Some people just be playing around, just trying. Oh, look at me! I'm I'm riding waves until one of them comes and <laughs> and shows you how we are riding waves. Uh -huh. Subhanallah. And the the scene we see it the the most. I think it's when he say goodbye to our, the family mm. and to even to the parent. You know, he look really bigger than uh, than him, and he see his mother and she mm. look. Uh, Small, it's a small mm. and the father too and mm. the sister too so mm. it, we can imagine that he go really proud mm. to mm. keep the country keep the family and go mm -hmm. live the, the quest mm -hmm. what else other others other scenes where the ego was really uh, where, where the ego had the had the last word to say bismillah yes give him that uh, yes there is an, yeah this one should be on this side this one on this side hey, what? Yes, uh, when he insisted on going through the Red Sea and he was dressed with all the beautiful clothes Aye. and he was glorious and he said, oh. yeah, uh -huh. I'm going to the Red Sea. Mm, he was pumped. Uh -huh. Right? Yes. Who pumped him? Uh, his, uh, so in the beginning success. he was pumped, he was his, pumped by the dream. Now yes. who, he was pumped by what? Uh, his uh, close success of getting to Cairo mm. and then... Uh, He's meeting with uh, the other fr friend who, who, uh, of his family and mm -hmm. uh, the gift he received and his nice clothes and that he was successful now and mm -hmm. he could continue on. So he was pumped. Uh -huh. He was pumped. By what? By whom? Yes, his ego. But his ego pumped. But the ego was pumped by whom? By what intervention? So in the beginning, he got boosted by the dream. But now the ego is pumped. We say pumped, right? Huh? Pumped up, huh? huh? Inflated. Now he's inflated by what? A scholar. A bad man? No, a good man. The judge, the wise man, a sheikh. What did he tell him? Uh, did he? Did he listen? Did, did he hear the full thing? He got distracted at the second part, you know, with the gift. You shall reach your destination, you are great, that's it. He got there. And then after that meeting, things. Huh? But he never told him he will get to Mecca. So even his, in his dream, he never got to Mecca. So that whole um, journey was something, not about Mecca, it was about... Myself. Yeah, yeah. because he said, it's... Um, he, didn't, he never told him you will but get he there. But he confirmed. He confirmed him the dream. He told him through by the Red Sea. Khalas, you are going to, you are on 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 wings of a bird flying, the, the sea. So the Red Sea. That's it. The Red Sea. The Red Sea. Mm. So that was also a mysterious experience. Meeting with the man of God. He met a man of God, who was not his spiritual guide, but he met another man of God. But that meeting was an interference. But meeting was an, an interference. Even though he was a, that man was a man of God. Now the spiritual guy, after that, well, after the interference, was he able to listen to the spiritual guy? That's it. That's it. He gave up on that spiritual guy and told him, now that's it. Our, 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 our contract was for your protection, not for your... That's it. And they gave him the money, and, and when he saw the fire, then he understood that he uh, was... So, so the first sentence will be, a man was called to the holy presence of the divine, and then he sat on the journey without a guide, by choice, with no company, no caravan, without a guide, knowing that people will have guides. Knowing that people, in general, they go and find a guide to guide them through this desert of of the self, knowing that he has chosen to embark in that journey without a guide, without any, without a company. What did he take with him? Remember, do you remember the first scene? Camel what? Yes, he took the compass, all the tools, 
the mind. That's the mind. So he took with him what? His aql. He took with him his his critical thinking. He took with him his logos, his rationality. It happens to us. Do you understand? In our spiritual journey, then he decided to embark in this spiritual journey to know about himself. Hmm? To become a man of God. To be to 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 answer the call and and embrace the holy presence of the divine. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. I'm here. I'm coming to you with what? With my compass and map. And I got it already well. Huh? I got my sandala hat and my and my nate sbih subha and my uh, and my uh, udimentary perfume and I got all the kit right all the kit for beginners I got so huh the start back to become a Sufi <laughs> to become a, to become a true Sufi he got his sandala hat he got his Yemeni shawl like Sidi Stefan when I met him in the beginning <laughs> huh. And now, unfortunately, what can I do? I did not want to expo expose you, but Alhamdulillah, you know, now I got my Marrakesh Laba, the unique one. I've, I've looked in all the shops of Morocco to find one like his, unique, the only red jalaba I have seen like that, very beautiful, seriously, the most beautiful, unique jalaba from Marrakesh, the subha, the perfume, everything is one, two, three, like, you know. Mm, huh? Textbook, neat. Uh, he got all his library set. Al Ibris of Abdul Aziz al Dabba. Number one, right? That was the first book he wanted to read with me at that, by the way. Out of humility, he wanted to navigate through it by himself. But, anyways, all of them, all the books of Imam al Haddad, all Imam al Ghazali, all, all, all of them, you know? Huh? Sorry? Oh, yes, Futuhat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Meccan illumination, you know, he got all his Sufi kit ready. And they have a master in philosophy. So I'm ready to navigate in the spiritual journey and learn about myself. Well, 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 ah, well, he went. So this young man. So the beginning of the journey, what did he take with him? Other than the campus, the map, what did he take with him? A knife and what else? Horse and? And donkey, horse and donkey. He took the horse and the donkey. Do you think that the movie maker could not think of something better? He could just put him on a camel. Why the horse and the donkey? What's the horse and what's the donkey? That's the beginning of the journey. Hmm? So we said, huh? what is the horse and the donkey symbolism? What is the horse and what is the donkey? You have a horse, attach, attach, do you have a, you, you've got a donkey attached to a horse and he's riding the horse and the donkey is following with, yes. The extra ten. Oh, -ho. so just walk to it. Uh, go ahead. The horse can be the, the proud and the, the, horse, the, the pride. And the donkey, the humility. And when he met the sheikh for the first time, he cut the, the cord, you know? Ah. He cut the cord. I don't the... agree that the donkey could be the humility. What did he have on top of the donkey? His? His luggage. His food. His provision. What is the donkey? The dunya. The... The material life. So he was not ready to give up. And that's what happens to us when we go to the spiritual journey. The horse and the donkey. So when we start our journey in the beginning, we start with the horse. We don't actually choose the right mount. If I ask you about the horse, was the horse the right mount? Was the horse the right mount? Hmm? For a long journey. Is the horse the right mount? No, I don't know if the horse is so. Absolutely not. The horse is not good for long distances, ma'am. The horse can only take you. 
You can fight on top of a horse. But the horse can only take you some, not even halfway, to give you a boost. People never travel on horses to go to, to go somewhere. Horses, you use them for war, you use them for... Hmm, no, 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 horses are not able to... They are, are they, are they uh, how to say, uh, animals, are they uh, durable? Uh, are they enduring animals? No, they are not. The endurance of horses is very limited. That's why you need a camel to travel, or even a mule. A mule will do much better than a horse to travel long distances. But the horse runs fast. That's why he took a horse. He thought it was, he thought it was about jumping. And that's when we take the spiritual journey, we think, we assume it is about I'm um, jumpy, the jumpy me in myself. I'm, I'm going to jump, I'm going to get there and within 40 days. Huh? Uh? Whatever people will spend 10 days to do, I'll spend one night to. Right? So he chose them. Yet, even that proud and determination, etc., his aql insisted that he carries with him what? Some of his dunya, some of his... Was he ready to give up on it? He wasn't ready to give up on it. So that's what happens to us in the beginning of the spiritual journey. If we don't have a guide, we want to get it all. I want to go fast. But in the same time, it's counterproductive. <laughs> Do you understand? Are you getting me? You did not laugh at him? Why would he take a donkey? With the horse. I mean, if you take a horse because you want to move fast. That's what, that's what horses are good for. Otherwise, you take two mules. It will be cheaper and more coherent. So clearly there in that scene, if you were watching, you would see, you would have, stupid, what are you doing there? What are you doing then? A horse. And you, you can see that the horse is trying his best to, to run fast and the donkey is k killing itself. <laughs> That's how it is. Lack of consistency. Lack of coherence. So do you want to move fast? Or do you want to eat well? Just choose, please. One of the two. You can't. You can see there when you don't have a guide in the journey, you end up using the wrong, the wrong tool. And that was the first thing that the guide gave him. After the guide came into game, he changed the, the mount. That was the first thing that the guide did. When he started continuing the journey, when he continued the journey with the guide, the first thing, he changed the, changed the mount. Before, before they continued part of it with, 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 with his mount, and then the mount in the desert proved itself not good. Huh? And then they, they changed the mount. So the horse and the donkey symbolism. So he was his horse and donkey. When danger came, he gave up on the... He gave up on donkey. He gave up on the donkey. And that shows that his attachment to the low material life was not as big as his attachment to his ambition. Ambition. Mission for conscious beings. Ambition for everyone else. Ambition. He had an ambition to go. Yes? Go ahead. So the symbol of the mule, because many times we heard story with like uh, Sayyidina Isa is on a mule or Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is on a mule. It means they... Patience. Patience? Not they transcend the dunya or something? Both. If, okay. Both. It's more... Smart people, they will have mules. Because they eat less. They are stronger. The food of mules is cheaper. They live longer. They carry heavier things. Uh -huh. And it is, it is the right, it is the mount of the layman. Hmm? It was also the mount of Sulaiman. 
He was not a layman, but mashallah. <laughs> Even the Sulay man. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? The horse and the donkey, okay, beginning of the journey, dreams, enthusiasm, determination, hmm? some excess of zeal, arrogance, all of these answered the call hmm? and interfering, some boasting also. Hmm? He himself, he said, uh, it, uh, uh, when he said, what a boastful thing I said to my cousin when I said, if I am to die, let it be uh, on the path to Mecca. Uh, uh. Then, what happened? He started with the horse and donkey. What happened? In the beginning, it was good. Uh, as soon as the family left, now he started facing what? As soon as all of these left, he started facing what? Yeah, but before the obstacles, what happened? The scenery. Do you remember? So it was mountains, greens. In the beginning, it orchards, orchards, uh, orchards or orchards? Orchards, farmers, people were, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum, people are just beautiful, uh, familiar, surrounding, etc. At some point, it became the mountains, still familiar. At some point, it became the desert. Now he's facing his emptiness. Now he's facing his own desert. Now he's facing his own drought. You feel some discouragement even on his face. And at the night, the horse is, huh? His horse is agitated. What is the horse? You said the horse is his? Determination, his. Huh? His? Ambition, his. Huh? Even that, it got agitated and he got, he had to go and reassure himself. Let us continue. Hmm? What happened the next day? He sees so long in front of him, whoa, discouragement, etc. And then the next night, what happened? Or the next afternoon, what happened? He got attacked. He got attacked. Enemies came and he got attacked and he wanted to play smart. He gave up on his provision, he gave up on his dunya, but still, they got him. They got him. And who came? At that point, a spiritual guide, disguised, the disguised assistance. We often expect spiritual guides to come in white clothes, white robes, white beards, full of light. Maybe why not having a, having a, huh? having a halo? Why not having two angels dancing on their shoulders? Why not having ten angels carrying their robe? Why not having this feeling of, uh, 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 I almost fainted when I saw my spiritual guide the first time. Why not having this? Uh, that's what we expect, right? Well, the guru it has to be so impressive. It has to be so... <laughs> what was it? Huh? He met the guide in black clothes. They say you meet the guide of your genre, of your kind. And the guide will manifest to you in your kind. If you are kind, he will be kind. If you are not, <laughs> if you are a criminal, if you are a thief, because if you go claiming the treasures of God, without purifying yourself, you are what? You are stealing mal al -yatim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ مَلَى الْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي يَحْسَنْ Don't touch, don't even dare to come close to the, to the belonging of the orphan. What's that? What's that? The belonging of the orphan. Who's the orphan? When you read the Qur'an, there are many meanings. God is telling us, don't even come close to the belonging of the orphan except with excellency. Hmm? What is the belonging of the orphan? Ihsan. What is the treasure of the orphan? What are the treasures that he left for us? The Prophet. The wisdom of God, the divine wisdom. Don't even touch it, don't even go to it. 
You go to that with a polluted heart, full of arrogance and pride, and then you are a thief. <laughs> you want to test al qasama <laughs> Then you are a thief. Then, 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 what will happen to you? Like these jinn who want to listen to angels, what happens to them? They will be shut down. Then he'll be shot down, and he got shot. <laughs> he got stabbed. He got shot, and he got shot down. No, 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 no. There is no way you can continue in this journey like this. You have to learn more about yourself. You have to purify yourself. You have to... Then he went. So, uh, the guide came, and the guide was this disguised... Huh? Disguise it? Assistance of God. Disguise it, divine assistance. What did the guy do? Do you remember? What did the thief do? What did he do? So first of all, when he came, what happened to the other thieves? They, they only stopped? What happened to them? They stepped back and they gave their weapons. That's it. What's that? Ibn Arabi says, when you start having a spiritual master, all the obstacles, the random obstacles of the dunya, huh? they will submit to him. And then he will be monitoring your obstacles in order for you to benefit from each one of them. All the sicknesses and the obstacles of everything, 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 they will just submit to him. Khalas. Because these obstacles, he says, they were junudullah. They were soldiers of God. Now when you have the general, you have the lieutenant colonel, you have the... the what do we call it? What? Huh? The lieutenant. When you have the lieutenant and the new tenant, huh? that's it. All tenants and the, all the, the uh, soldiers, they have to just... And he will be paying them. And then the spiritual guide will be playing with all of that context of yours. All your context that was disciplining you by default, uh, that, will, that was teaching you wisdom by default. Maybe you are missing out the majority of it. You understand? Because you are unconscious. Let us say, let us say he won. Let us say the spiritual guy did not come, he won. He will have just a beautiful story to boast of. <laughs> More than any other story, right? And the spiritual guide came and that's it. They gave, all of them they gave in. Hmm? They submitted to him, they gave in to him and then he came. The spiritual guide came and the spiritual guide took him to. What did he do? What did he do? He took his money, he gave it to to the poor, to the thieves. The thieves were poor. He actually invited him to change his perspective, to shift his paradigms. Instead of seeing thieves as criminals, they were poor. Okay. That's it. That's after. So he gave the money to the thieves or to the poor. Hmm? He wanted to shift our paradigms. And what else? What did he take? He took his water. He took his water. What is the water? What is the symbolism of the water? Life, okay. What is the symbolism of the water in a small container? Huh? It's very easy now. Yalla, don't be lazy, come on. What's the symbolism of water in a small container? So you said the symbolism of water is life. So you can get water from the source or you can be contented with your bottle. So what did he take from him? So that, that, that small thing of water, very with broadery, with, again, it reminds me of Sidi Stefan, really. And very, very unique with the broadery, maybe from Marrakesh or from where, very, very beautiful. Uh, that small container of, uh, with Sandala, I think of, that small thing of water, it's the symbolism of what? It's Sidi Felix as well. It's, it's myself before everyone. It's, 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 it's what? Okay, what is... Yeah? 
You said, Cont I, was, I was very happy. Contentment. Self-contentment. The first thing that you will need to give up when you start the spiritual journey is your self-contentment. Be contented with what you have. He was contented with that little water. You understand? Would that little water help him anyways? Let us say he would, let us say he left that water for him. For how long that water will be good for him? Huh? Let us say he did not even meet any thief. He was going to die anyways. Do you understand? So the divine intervention and the spiritual assistance after that coming, it was actually to save him. Let us say he did not meet anything. So how, how if he did not meet these thieves? How if these highway robbers... Uh, what if? What if the highway robbers did not come? What would have happened? He would, he would have died unknown in the desert. Because look at the quantity of water that he had. Yes, with the broadery, with the beautiful and the tree of life. And the lotus flower and everything. He got all the kit, right? Okay. What would happen? He was on the wrong path. Wasn't he? Look at the desert that they needed to continue through after. He would have just died under these dunes. Without guide. Helping him to how to how to handle your horse and your courage and your determination during the stormy days. He wanted actually to to face the wind, and the guide yelled at him, "If face, it's not time to face. This is time to if face." And he did not. The guide went and he put his horse down. Put your horse down. It's, there, are, there are moments where you don't fight. You just submit. Until the, until the storm. And after that, actually, it's much easier. Do you remember? Do you see the scenes? Do you so the guide came as this. Uh, hmm? Yes, yes. What is it? Aha, uh -huh. you remember, you are making connection with the life, right? Absolutely. <laughs> that, that, that's the, this is the purpose of this movie. It's really to understand about our own selves. So, journeying without a guide, mm -hmm. now he found his guide, the guide was disguised. Did he, did he accept him as a guide in the beginning? No, he saw him as what? Mm. Absolutely. So, after that, the guide, he took that self-contentment. All what he took from him is that self-contentment. So, to what? To speed up the process. So when the guide takes something away from you, he's just to speed up the process because what is this knowledge that you have with you? What is the thing that you have with you? It's like, it would have, it would have uh, continued. It would have given you life maybe for four or five extra days and after that. So to speed up the process, he took that self-contentment. Yes, go ahead. Give the mic to Sadashana. There's that beautiful part where they're sitting in the camp at night and, and uh, he asks him, what does a young man like you want to do with going to Hajj? You uh -huh. know, it's a, it would have been an opportunity for some vulnerability even or for some connection, but he, he chose at that to point boast. to be, well, you know, whoever. It's an opportunity to travel. He, was, he yeah. admitted that. Yeah. And, but then he said, you know, whoever God is with, you know, God is with. So it was that moment of seeing how he has the book knowledge, he knows how to quote from Qur'an and then the guide gives him the rest of the verse <laughs> and explains to him that you can read many things in Qur'an. Don't, don't assume that you've got it just because you've memorized a few lines here and there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... Beautiful. I mean, that's again that, that experience that we all have that we can know something. We think we know it, but uh, we, can't, we can't really implement it until we're... We know the half. ...equipped. Yeah. These, these, these people, uh, Sahabi Omar calls them Al-Ansaf, the Halvis. Not the Hobbits, the Halvis. Not the, ha the Hafiz, the Halvis. 
Not the half of the imam, the half of the imam. So the half of the imam said, Laysa ma'al ansafi insaf. Laysa ma'al ansafi insaf. The halves, they don't have fairness. The halves, you can't find fairness with them. Laysa ma'al ansafi insaf. The halves do not have fairness. Subhanallah. But before that scene, he woke up, he woke up to the, to the face of a little boy. And then a generous man smiling. Huh? Who were these people? Who was the boy and who was the man? The beautiful faces, who were they? They were the family of the teacher, right? So do you remember that scene when that smile came to him and Marhaba, please come in and uh, I would say these are two dimensions of the teacher himself. The Jamal and the Jalal. So he smiled to the beauty, to the Jamal, to the, to the young boy coming to to But that young boy and that and that man who was hosting him, they were doing that because of whom? Who told them to do that? But because of the ignorance, he smiled at the soldiers or the servants of the teacher. But when the bold truth, the bold, he was bold, right? Bold, huh? Bold. When the bold truth came, he lost his smile. Hmm? Haqiqa nasi'ah. Salah. Clear truth. Do you understand? Even though that smile and that hospitality, who, who brought him there? I mean, he, he could just have thought about it, just make the, made the connection like quickly, but he wasn't able to. You understand? Sometimes with the same person, with the, in the presence of the same person, if he smiles to me and helps me, etc., 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 I'm happy. The time... The time they show me another, another, another kind of concern. It's all concern, right? The boy who was watching, are you okay? It's all concern. But concern translates in different, in different forms. The moment the concern was translated in a, in a different form. We want the concern with the smile face and how are you doing? Not too bad. Come, eat, greet, <laughs> meet. So he came to the teacher. And Jamal and Jalal are two faces of the same essence and entity. Jalal is the bold huh? truth. After that, they made the contract on top of the fire or the light. They made the contract, which is the bay'ah with the guide. And what Usada Shanaz uh, noticed, she said, he mentioned, he mentioned a verse from the Quran, Ibn Battuta. So then the guide said, tell me about yourself. Instead of saying, I'm really vulnerable, I need help, I need, please. He started boasting about himself again. And the Shaykh has no time to waste with that. Now at this point, he started talking about himself. I don't know. Why? How do you have, from where you are getting your confidence or your trust, instead of saying, so the one Allah gives him help, he will never be. Oh, 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 oh. Now you are attributing this victory, even, even this recent victory, even finding me as guide, you are attributing it to yourself because you are so special, you, find, you found me. And that's what happens to the many students. In the beginning, they are in the journey with their sheikh, but the sheikh is just... In the, in, in the shadow, they, they attribute the victory, finding that special teacher, to themselves because Allah is with me. <laughs> not because the shaykh really has, has ataf alayya. Not because the shaykh had, huh? had pity on me. No, no. Because Allah is with me, sakharali. He, he, he put at my service this guy <laughs> because I'm so special. So the shaykh had no time to waste with boastful plans. Uh, immediately, he cut it short, and he gave him the fear alongside with the hope, and the one Allah has, uh, Allah abandons. 
Okay, there is too much knowledge to find in the Quran. Yalla, tomorrow we start. <laughs> I have no time to waste with you talking. Talking the talk, let us walk the walk. Tomorrow we start walking, boy. Talking, talking, talking about myself and my plan and my family and my, my ADHD and my ADD and my, and my depression and my anxiety and my panic attacks and my, and my dreams and everything. You, you know that these, walk, these talks, okay, you can... I have no time for these talks. Let us start walking the wall. Yalla, tomorrow. Tomorrow we start. They started. With the Shaykh, how was the journey? With the guide, how was the journey? The pace, the beauty it was. Huh? So with the Shaykh, what do we find? We move faster. They move it faster. Even. Okay. Uh, we benefit from his wisdom during times of difficulty. Had he been alone, he would have chosen to, to face the storm. But the Shaykh told him to efface during the storm. We don't face the storm, we efface. Whenever the, uh, our teacher used to tell us a lot, this, this one said, when, 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 the, when, when the big wave comes, don't, don't, uh, huh? don't face it with your chest, dive in. Until it goes. The smart one will dive in, then dive. Mm. And then we reach destination in beauty. Finally, they reach very, very, very quickly. Actually, it was, I, I counted it was a minute and a half. The whole thing. Tuk, 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 tuk. Oh, the Nile. Salam alaikum. Rabbina, Rabbina, Rabbina. Khalikum, Rabbina. Ibarak fikum, Rabbina. Khalas, they reach their destination. Now they are in the Nile. Everyone is greeting them. They reach it. So with the Shaykh, we move faster, we benefit from his wisdom during times of difficulty, and we reach our destination in beauty. What happened in Cairo? Interference. Interference. Zzz, interference. Someone came in between. Now find the Sheikh cannot really have that direct access to his student, and someone imposed himself in between with more beautiful appearance with true white beard, with big turban, with Afshih al-Amir. Maybe he's like the big sheikh of the world, the Qutb or something like that, or people are taking him to be that. And uh -huh. Sheikh so-and-so. People today, are they looking for shaykh? They're looking for celebrities. Really? Who's your sheikh? Doctor so-and-so, okay. How often do you see him? How often do you get to work on your real self? I mean, he comes, if you see him once per year, and he will have to act nice with you. Because to be rude, come on. <laughs> you understand? Have you worked with him? Have you invested? Then, well, really? Is there any chance to, for you to really have a genuine suluk? People, that's the problem today. People, they look for celebrities. Why? When my sheikh is a celebrity, myself, I am? Ah, I'm special. One. Number two, they are looking for trust in celebrities. And that's, that's uh, they think that because that sheikh is a celebrity, that guru is a celebrity, that means he's more, he might be, but maybe not for you. The smart one looks for someone next door. Accessibility is the criteria number one. It should be. Accessibility. Someone who is, who is ready for you to take your file. Uh, so he went to this celebrity now in Cairo. And the celebrity is between the, the guide and this. Uh, Allah's interference happened. He was boasted with the gifts, with what the teacher, even what? Even though the celebrity, he said something very true. He told him, you should reach your destination if you... Ah, if you follow the advice of those around you. He did not get it. He did not get it because he doesn't see anyone but himself. He's so full of himself now again. When you are so full of yourself, you are so full. You don't see anyone else. And then he insists on the path of his... Huh? Of his dream.
What happened when he insisted on the path of his dream? He broke the he broke the contract. And that's the scene with the eagle khalas. What happened? The Sheikh disappeared. Did he insist? What happened after that? He went and he found that the Sheikh was actually was true. Not only true, he just reached the time that everything was burned. What happened then? The Sheikh, he made tawbah. And he made tawbah, forgive my foolishness, forgive my pride, forgive my arrogance, allow me to reach the mount of, of mercy. Don't give up on me, my Lord. Moment of truth, what happened? Huh? The Sheikh reappeared. Now the Sheikh reappeared, Damascus, Damascus, you don't have time to waste. Allah bismillah, salamu alaykum, taslim, and that's part of the journey. Now, after that, it was very short, I counted it, it was 30 seconds, from there to, the, to Damascus. Khalas, now the journey is, all the obstacles are removed, we went through all of them. What happened, the Sheikh led him all the way to, to, the, to, the, to the Mecca? No, to where? What's in Damascus, the? The caravan. What happens in the caravan? The Sheikh leaves? No. What happens? The Sheikh? Are he? The Sheikh and other people. Ah, and other people. The Sheikh dissolves in the company. At some point in the journey, at some point in the spiritual journey, the Sheikh dissolves into the caravan. What we call the Sahba, the company. At some point, when he becomes the brother, Khalas, you are. Ah, you are my brother. When he becomes the brother, the sheikh dissolves into the, into the caravan. So you need to, you have to see that caravan not without the sheikh. That, that's the zawiyah, basically. That's the brothers and sisters of the, uh, uh, the fellowship. At some point, the sheikh dissolves into the, the fellowship. At some point, the sheikh dissolves into the, the fellowship. Now. So you see him when he becomes the brother, you see him in all of them. Uh, and that's the part. Uh, that's the end of the that's the end of of the of the thing. And then khalas, you are ready now to you are ready now to do to do your hajj and in the caravan after that. All what it needs is that huh? cooperation. When they were about to give up, what what, what what took them to? He was, he was about to give up. What happened to him? The Shaykh reappeared again to tell him, continue, what happened? A brother who arrived, came back, collective energy, a brother who arrived, came back and said, Medina, Medina, I saw Medina, I saw Medina, it's there, I saw it. Khalas. Then that's the importance of the journey. After the purification of the heart and after the, all what is left after that is the, the, the harmony and the collective energy and the uh, companionship, the true companionship, collective energy, harmony, cooperation, encouraging each other. And then it becomes like that. That's how it is in the spiritual journey. So that's the the. What you could see after that, the symbolism of the Hajj and the symbolism of the... It's very easy. The, uh, he, he, he exposed it. He said it. We, did, we do this to remember this. We do this to remember this. We dress like this to remember this. We dress like that to remember that. And uh, How many of you could see the spiritual journey? Can see it now? Obvious in the movie, not could see. How many of you can see it now? Oh, yeah, clearly, obvious. Hmm? How many of you could see this before, before the discussion? You see Huh? Because you watched it with me last year, but okay. <laughs> so before last year. Huh? So Alhamdulillah. So we did not waste our time. So, and that's the... Uh, how many of you regret the, to stay late until 10, uh, 20? Okay. I know you are so polite. Even if you do, you are not going to do it. But Alhamdulillah. God bless you all. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you all tawfiq. 
God bless you all. Amin ya Rabbil